they printed uh, a combination of materials. So there's a, a rigid white plastic here to simulate the, 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 the hard rigid plastic. And then each one of these corners are printed with a different what's called a shore value. Um, or softness, so they were trying to figure out how flexible these corners should be. So all in one print, they were able to print four different softnesses in the rigid top all at the same time. This is Renaz Arbailo for InnoMind.org. Today I am at the Jacob Javits Center and there is Inside 3D Printing Expo and I'm talking to Bruce from Stratasys. Hi Bruce. Hi Renaz, how are you? Good, good, good. Please tell us about uh, your company, brief, uh, you know, about your technology and how long it's been around. Sure. Out there. So Stratasys has been around for 20 plus years mm -hmm. um, and there's multiple technologies under one roof. Actually, um, Stratasys actually merged with another company called Object, which mm -hmm. was headquartered in Israel, and that's what brought another technology to the table. Um, essentially, the two core technologies of the company, one is called FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling, and that is basically using uh, a number of different engineering plastics and whatnot to get prototypes very popular in the jigs and fixtures in the manufacturing space mm -hmm. um, at a very high level. The other part is called polyjet and that came from the object side of the house and that's actually inkjet printing so it works much like your inkjet printer does at your home but rather than jetting ink it's jetting a liquid resin that gets cured with a UV light. And that well, not laser, UV light. It's cured with a UV light, just mm -hmm. like your inkjet printer does at home. And we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. I'll show you how that actually functions. Right. But that allows you to do a blend of material. So I can get a rubber-like material. I can get a plastic-like material. Lots of things like that that will allow me to do a lot of uh, prototyping. So the polyjet side is really, we look at it as really in the design uh, mm -hmm. stage. And the FDM technology, the high end of our FDM technology, is really used on the manufacturing production side of stuff. I see. Now, so you saying you saying uh, a plastic could be having uh, a rubber piece inside of it already embedded? Correct. Let me just show print you. Printed. Yep. So, take for example this. This is a, a, a prototype from Rubbermaid, actually. Mm -hmm. And when they were actually trying to design this top, they printed uh, a combination of materials. So there's a, a rigid white plastic here to simulate the, 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 the hard rigid plastic, and then each one of these corners are printed with a different what's called a shore value. Um, or softness, so they were trying to figure out how flexible these corners should be. So all in one print, they were able to print four different softnesses in the rigid top all at the same time. I see, I see, I see there's uh, four seams. Yes. What, what is that? Is that keeping the things together? Or? No, 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 that was just to delineate between the different softnesses. From here to here is one shore value, uh -huh. from here to here is another. We could have we could have printed it without that, it could have blended together with black, but it was just a way to delineate between the two different corners. I see. Bruce, how much is this machine so, capable of printing multiple uh, materials? So we have a range of mas machines. We have three series of products. We have the Idea Series, and then actually the entry level price point for that machine is $10,000. Mm -hmm. And that's actually going to give you a rigid uh, ABS plastic material. Uh, then we move into the design series, which is where we're doing multiple material, and we have uh, a range of printers ranging from uh, about $20,000 all the way up to $400,000, and you get um, different varieties of materials and sizes that you would print. And then on the production side, uh, very similar in terms of cost, um, there are uh, printers that start in the $30,000, $40,000 range, go all the way up to $400,000. I see. Who is your client? So uh, it's interesting, again, I, I referenced those three different series of products, and so depending on who you're talking to, if I'm, if I'm uh, someone talking about the idea series, I'm actually talking about a designer, someone who's thinking about their designs, and basically replacing the napkin stage, if you will. They're actually going to print mo a lot of prototypes, they want it inexpensively, they want it quick, and they want it on their desktop. So you could say distributed engineers in a corporate 1,000 company might use these. Somebody who's a small in, uh, innovator, that kind of stuff, would use one of these printers. When you move into the design series, um, you do get some of that. Um, uh, let me back up for a second. The idea series is also great for education institutes. So lots of schools, mm. from high schools all the way through to technical colleges, all the way through to universities. When you move into the design series, now we're looking at uh, large and small companies that are trying to do, basically anybody that designs a product, take, take for instance your microphone, whoever that company is, probably designed something using a 3D printer, hopefully it was ours, uh, to simulate uh, the design before they went off and manufactured right. a million of these. And then on the high end, the same company that was going to manufacture a million of these, they want to be agile with their manufacturing line, so they want to be able to adjust their manufacturing lines quickly. They'll use a 3D printer to do that. So it's basically a full range of customers. What is your company's niche compared to the competition? 
Um, I would say it's a breadth of technologies that answer lots of different applications. Uh, you know, it's funny, the industry or people look at the industry and they, they want to try to classify it into one technology, one tool that a company should buy. Right. The reality is lot companies, most companies own multiple technologies. Just like a carpenter has multiple tools in his tool belt. Or whatever needs. They right. exactly the same thing here. I see. Now uh, there is you know a new trend coming out, you know, with, with affordable printing. Yep. What can you say about this technology? So affordable printing, and I think we're we're like we're in it's a, like home printing, yeah. basically. So that's where I was going to I was going to go to. That if you look at uh, the the uptick, if you will, in the noise about uh, the consumer level, the hobbyist machines. My opinion, and this is Bruce Bradshaw's opinion, yeah. not necessarily everybody's strategist, but right. my opinion is consumers will be affected in a different way than how the press is perceiving it today. I don't think your mom's buying a 3D printer tomorrow. I don't yeah. think she'll have the need for it. However, five years down the line, she may have a need to fix the knob on her radio, so she'll get that file from Bose and go to Home Depot and print it. That's how I think consumers are going to be uh, affected by these printers. It's great for all of us because it brings lots of attention and focus to 3D printing, but I don't think consumers at large are going to do it. I think it's hobbyists, I think it's inventors, and that's a great thing for 3D printing. Artists, right? Yeah, exactly. I'll summarize it with one thing. Uh, you hear the term that um, uh, the paperless office. Yeah. The paperless office was going to be here, right? right? Well, the technology exists for the paperless office. The technology exists for everybody to own a 3D printer. It's just not practical, just like a paperless office is impractical. Also, do you sell the material as well? We do. I we see. sell the material. So all the machines, actually, you'd get the material from Stratus. And how much is it per kilogram? Uh, it's it's actually, there's ways to, to look at it. So rather Different materials, of yeah, course. Yeah, so it's about, depending on which technology, somewhere Let's between... Let's say ABS. Uh, it's about $4 a cubic inch. When you move into the polyjet technology, it gets a little bit more expensive, 5 to $6, and it's very geometry dependent because every part has support and every su part has model. Support's less expensive. So if I print something that has lots of air to it, where I'm going to fill it up with support, it's going to be a less expensive part than if I printed a cube of model material. So it's geometry dependent. I see. Now, but uh, do you sell your material based on, on weight or what? No, it, it actually, they all come in cartridges, if you will. The FDM are spools of plastic mm. that, or, or ABS, whatever material they're going to use. Right, right. And they would buy a cartridge of that. And in the object, they're actual cartridges that get inserted into the machine. So they're, you don't buy a vat like you would with some other technologies. Right. And what's the highest resolution that your printers uh, print out in yeah. terms of? So a lot of people tend to look at this in a like a 2D space, and they try to uh, associate this with 2D printing. Right. Um, but it's a little bit different in 3D printing. It's really based on the layer thickness. That's what's going to give you a smooth surface. Exactly. Right. So, so our printers, 16 microns, which is about a third of a hair, which is pretty much the finest resolution you can get in the industry. I see. Can you demonstrate something that the machine is doing right now sure, and sure. maybe perhaps uh, talk a little yeah, bit about so that? It, so, like I said before, it functions in a very simplistic way, much like your inkjet printer does at home, but it's jetting a liquid resin that gets cured with a UV light. And it prints at that 16 micron layer and the, the tray drops down 16 microns with each layer and it grows the part. Is this the idea or the uh, the design, design series? This is called the Object 260. I see. So this this not necessarily be used for educational. No, we have lots of education institutes um, that are doing research. A lot of the universities, the MITs of the world, the Harvards, the Cornells, mm -hmm. UCLA's, those they have invested in this technology. I see. And also, uh, Jay, if we can uh, pan across some, some of the models at, at the table, maybe I can ask you about how long it takes uh, for a particular model that you know sure, of. I think it might be a little Let me uh, just see. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, let's, say, let's say something as complex as this. What would you say? So, this came out printing in general, when you print, so that's okay. So, the printing in general, when you print, is actually going to be dependent on the, 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 uh, what, what dimension you're going to print it in. So, it, it's about a, a third. This particular one was probably a 10 hour print, maybe, or less. The more you go on the Z axis, the longer it's going to take to print.